everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. I'm here with Jeff Chandler from True Dungeon. Hello, Jeff. Hi, how are you? Great, how are you? I'm wonderful. <laughs> awesome, good to hear. How is uh, the con doing for you here? Uh, it's doing very well. Um, people seem to love True Dungeon. I love True Dungeon, so I think it's going well for me. Awesome. Could you tell us a little bit about what the True Dungeon experience is and what people could, like, if someone never heard of it, what do you say? Uh, True Dungeon is a lot like an escape room, but it's based uh, on D&D. &D. Uh, every 12 minutes you go to a new room, you can fight a monster, you can solve a puzzle, or do both. But we're here to have fun. But it, it, Whereas everybody, when you used to play D&D &D as a kid, you would tell the DM, hey, I would like to go look at that. I would like to pick that up. What happens? Uh, with our event, we have all the sets. So if you say, hey, what happens when I pick that up? You will, um, the DM will say, go pick it up. What happens? So you can actually grab things, interact. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I love it. Awesome, sounds cool. So there's a bunch of uh, interactive elements, kind of escape room, kind of LARPing, D&D. &D. Awesome, and then you have three different kind of paths or, or uh, stories, right, that people can follow. Yes, uh, at Origins we have um, three different adventures. We have N3, which is based on a Norse um, theme. It's Vault of the Allfather. Uh, then we have what we have E1 and E2, which are sort of a Central American Indiana Jones sort of idea, which is the Abyssal Swamp and the Path of Death. Awesome. Do you have a favorite one right now? I do not have a favorite one because I don't get to play. <laughs> uh, since I'm helping run and get everybody else through, I, I do like the new ones because we we've tried some new technology and we've got our animatronics and we have we have a lot of NPCs that dress up. So. I think they're all wonderful. I don't think you just need to play one. I think you need to play all three. Oh, okay. Do you have a, a favorite puzzle, maybe from a previous uh, sort of expired <laughs> dungeon? Well, see, that's the problem. They're, I have done this for 16 years now. They all run together. Um, so, no, unfortunately, I don't have a favorite. Oh. Sorry. Okay, okay, Sorry. that's all right. <laughs> uh, so thank you so much for sharing. Do you have anything else? Oh, where will you be next where people can go and find and experience True Dungeon? Uh, next we will be at Gen Con in Indy in August. Uh, then we go to Game Hole Con in Madison, Wisconsin. And then we go to PAX South in San Antonio. So we go to four, to four conventions currently. And so that's where you can come see True Dungeon. Awesome. And do people sign up online or through the con? Um, it depends. Here at Origins, uh, you go to td.events, and that's how you can sign up. But when we're at Gen Con, we use the Gen Con system. So just go to truedungeon.com, and that will give you all the information you need. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. It was a pleasure to meet you. You too. And I hope you have a great con. This is Callie Wright from Unfiltered Gamer, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Callie Wright and I'm here with Dave Killingsworth. Hello Dave, how hey, you Callie, doing? Callie, how's good? Very good. good. And you're here at the uh, Solar Fl Flare Games booth. Uh, how's, it, how's the con going? It's good. It was, we got a brand new game out. We launched a game last year. It's done really well. So we launched another game this year and everybody's been coming by very supportive, very happy with what we're doing. So it's very, very, very cool. Awesome. Now that you've grown a bit, you have a lot of uh, loyal customers, right? Loyal uh, community. After, after five and a half years, yeah. yeah, we have a pretty good fan base. Uh, it's The Robotech's slightly different from the rest of the, like the Nightmare Forest stuff that we do, but everybody seems really happy with the, the family product and the, and, the, and the quick turn time, fun time, kind of not three and a half hour game time. <laughs> awesome. So tell us more maybe specifically about Robotech Crisis Point and what you're showing here at the con today. Sure, so last year we started with Robotech Force of Arms, which is, this is all based on the anime from 1985 here in the US. So the first game was based on the first 25 or 26 episodes of the show. And then um, the Robotech Masters was the second part of the show. So we decided to do a game called Crisis Point, which is based on the second section of the show. 
And then later this year, we're actually going to put out a third game. It's going to be a cooperative that covers the last part of the show, which was the new generation. That's the one I can't wait for. I love cooperative yeah. games. <laughs> so uh, who, uh, how many players is Crisis Point and who sure. might be interested in buying? Um, both, both Force of Arms and Crisis Point are two-player head-to-head war games. Um, Macro, the Macross one, which is Force of Arms, is a little lighter, 20, 30 minutes, $20 game. And then Crisis Point is definitely what we call crunchier. Instead of some preset conditions that you work from, you build the whole thing as you go, which allows for you're trying to build synergies, you're trying to outmaneuver your opponent, you're working your way through um, just trying to set the board up to best for you, worst for your opponent as you trigger all the in-game components. So it's definitely a deeper, longer strategy type than the first one. Awesome. So if someone's interested in these games and they're not here at Origin, where can they go to find out more, maybe purchase online? Sure. Um, all of the games will be available in distribution uh, at any of local game stores. Uh, Force of Arms is already there. Um, you'll be able to order actually a free booster pack for Force of Arms by the end of the month. And Crisis Point will be available in stores at the end of the month or Robotech.com. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Dave. Thank you. And as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. See ya. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. I'm Callie here with Travis from Queen's Game. Hi, Travis. Hey, how are you? Great. How's it going here at Origins? Very busy. Lots of people playing games. Awesome. You have so many games, but I know there's a couple that are newer that you want to share with everyone. What are they? Sure. So our big release here is Copenhagen. Uh, we have it here in both the standard edition and the deluxe version, which has acrylic tiles. People are playing it nonstop and they're loving it. It's, it's a lot of fun. It looks like kind of like some sort of like kind of puzzle type game. Is that accurate? Yeah, it uses the polyomino tiles like you'd see in Tetris. It doesn't play anything like Tetris, but it's a set collection. We draft cards and collect them, then we turn them in for the tiles. And then you have to place them strategically to fill up columns and rows on the front of your house. And uh, it, it's good. Awesome. So how many players uh, is it? How long does it take? And who might like it? So it plays uh, two to four, and it scales from about 20 to 40 minutes based on the number of players. Um, it's a lighter weight game, so uh, it's definitely fun for families and a light the light in for gamers. We've decided we're, we have a Copenhagen Roll and Write coming out, too, that plays really well, so it'll oh. pair well with the game. Awesome. Okay, and if people are interested in the games, but maybe they can't make it to here or Gen Con, where should they go to find out more or purchase the game? So uh, you can purchase our games. You should, should be able to find them all in local stores, or you can purchase them online. We have a, a, an online site to purchase from. You can find it through our website. And you can follow us on Facebook and all the social media, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere. Awesome. Anything else you want to share? Any uh, exciting story you have from Origin? Oh, exciting. Origin's in Sunday and I get to go home. That's, oh. I'm just tired. No, I'm excited to meet you guys and everybody else who's here. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Travis. Sure, uh, yeah, and as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Origins Game Fair. I'm Callie, and I'm here today with Terrell T. Daryl T. Jones from Splattered Ink Games. Hi, Daryl. How's it going? Hi. Uh, it's going great. This is uh, day two, obviously, and we're rocking along. We've been doing demos nonstop today, so it's been a lot of fun. Awesome, great to hear. I know you're showing off uh, on the other side there, Dobbers, your first game, is that correct? Yeah, so Dobbers was uh, actually launched this weekend. So we did the Kickstarter last year, and uh, as of this week, we actually we have copies that we can sell. It's going out to all of our backers. Uh, it started fulfillment yesterday. So it's kind of like it's a birthday. Um, so it, that's, that's exciting to see that happening, and then finally getting to move on to the next game too. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. And Thank then you. this game you have here is the Always Green Garden. Tell us a little bit about it, uh, how many players and all of that. Sure. Uh, the Always Green Garden is sort of a fun mix-up of resource management, um, area control, worker placement, that sort of thing, but it's got a lot of mischief involved. <laughs> um, it's for two to four players. You know, my daughter can totally uh, grasp it. She's just seven years old, but the in-game strategy uh, has a lot of depth to it where you can dig in and create new actions for yourself uh, and, and push it a little bit further. So it probably is uh, kind of a medium weight 
uh, style game. It's, it plays under an hour. And did I say one to four players? I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, we got it in there now. <laughs> All, right. All right. And this is going to be coming on to Kickstarter at some point? Correct. Yes. Uh, July 2nd is what we're shooting for. Awesome. Well, uh, show us a little bit of the components and just a little bit about some of the basic mechanics of how you play. Great. Yeah. So this is uh, a handmade prototype. Uh, these are 3D printed pieces, but they will all be wood in the final version, including the dice. Uh, the idea is that you are playing one of the forest gnomes from the Dauber's universe. So this is a Dauber. Whoop, he's flying everywhere. Really um, cute. <laughs> thanks. Um, and you happen to be a chef. It just so happens that Beatrice, the matriarch of the Acorn Inn, is going to retire and she needs a replacement. So you're competing to become that replacement. You're doing so by collecting resources so you can fulfill recipes. So if, for example, we have some blueberry toast. We've got five, or these, uh, we need two fruit and two grains of nuts to get three points. It's also a loaf, so that's a key word that kind of plays into scoring later. Uh, to do so, you start out with rolling the dice. Whatever you roll is what's going to grow. Uh, we've got one fungus and one sunny day, so that's a while. Let's say I am working on the blueberry toast, so I'm going to put a one out here for uh, fruit. Um, then I can move my character onto the board and I can collect. Um, however, the collection process might be affected by using the special powers of the gardeners. In this case, I want to use clover. Clover puts out two additional ingredients, so I'm, I want to get some of those strawberries, so we'll put one strawberry out. Um, his second ingredient has to go in a different location, so we'll also put a green out because blueberry toast. So I can now collect these and put those in my basket. Then it moves on to the next player. What's unique about the other characters is that they have a special ability too. So he puts out the ingredients. Uh, Ursula, being nocturnal, will steal one ingredient from another player. Ruth, the matriarch, will let you get additional recipe cards, which you're going to need. And uh, the sneaky little uh, squirrel, Lily, will take one ingredient from an adjacent square. When you're using those special abilities, you get to move them to your location because they're eager to help. So if I am over here and I wanted to add more vegetables, I bring Clover over and he puts them in. If I'm over here and I want to steal this uh, grain while harvesting vegetables, I bring Lily over. So as you can see, the board is constantly changing. So when it comes around to your turn and you want to get a recipe approved that is one of Lily's, you have to bring your character to Lily because you want to impress them to get that recipe approved, right? The overall kind of theme mechanically is that each turn, the actions you take will create a different set of actions for the next player. Yeah, so there's actually quite a bit of social component to this as well, huh? There is. It, it's, <laughs> I wouldn't call it a bluffing game, but there's certainly an option where you can play a certain style that will try to mislead people <laughs> so that you can keep your spaces open. Um, I've had some people flat out during a demo say, don't put your guy there because that's where I'm going next, you know? <laughs> right. All right. Thank you for sharing uh, Always Green Garden. Uh, what, is there anything else you want to say to the camera? Yeah, well, I hope you'll come uh, take a good look at it. I've put a lot of heart and soul into the artwork. Um, it's inspired by my daughter, uh, same as Dauber's, where I worked with my son to help bring it to life. I worked with my daughter to bring this one to life. So it's a fun game, looks super cool on the table. Can't wait for the Kickstarter. Awesome. I love that story, making games with your kids, for your kids. That's yep. awesome. Uh, and where can people go if they're interested in seeing Always, Be Always Green Garden? Sure. If you go to splatterdink.com slash garden, uh, it'll take you straight there. If you get to splatterdink.com, though, you'll be able to find it. There's links and stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Daryl. And uh, as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. <laughs> <laughs>